Standing more than six miles from a Starship launch, something unusual can happen. The sound doesn't arrive first, the pressure does. Before your ears fully register the roar, your body feels a deep, rolling force pushing through the air, vibrating the ground beneath your feet and the structures around you. That sensation isn't imagination or exaggeration. It's the acoustic footprint of the most powerful rocket ever built, a vehicle that releases more energy into Earth's atmosphere in a few seconds than any machine in history. And the reason it feels this way comes down to one extraordinary design choice. 33 Raptor engines packed tightly together, firing as a single, violent system. At liftoff, the super-heavy booster generates roughly 16 million pounds of thrust. That number is hard to visualize, so here's the reality. It is enough force to lift nearly 18 fully loaded Boeing 747s straight upwards simultaneously. Every pound of that force is expelled as exhaust, traveling at supersonic speeds, colliding violently with the surrounding air. Sound is not a side effect here. It is the visible footprint of energy escaping into the atmosphere. Each Raptor engine produces just over 500,000 pounds of thrust using a full-flow staged combustion cycle. That cycle operates at extremely high chamber pressure, meaning the exhaust exits the engine with enormous kinetic energy. On its own, a single Raptor would already rank among the loudest liquid-fueled rocket engines ever built. Starship doesn't use one, it uses 33, firing within milliseconds of each other, arranged in an incredibly tight cluster. This is where intuition breaks down. Sound does not scale linearly. 33 engines do not simply make 33 times the noise. When sound pressure waves overlap, they interact. In certain configurations, those waves reinforce one another instead of canceling out. This is called constructive interference, and it is one of the core reasons Starship's acoustic signature is so extreme. Under Super Heavy, the exhaust plumes do not remain separate. They collide almost immediately after leaving the engine bells. These plumes merge into a single turbulent exhaust column, creating pressure oscillations that synchronize and amplify. Instead of dozens of independent sound sources, the rocket effectively becomes one massive acoustic generator. The tighter the engines are packed, the stronger this coupling becomes, and Starship pushes that geometry further than any rocket before it. What makes this sound especially punishing is its frequency content. Starship produces an unusually strong low-frequency component. Low-frequency sound waves carry more energy and travel much farther than high-frequency noise. They don't just fade away with distance. They bend around obstacles, penetrate buildings, and travel miles with minimal loss. That's why people living more than 10 miles from the launch site report windows shaking and walls vibrating during liftoff. Near the pad, sound pressure levels exceed 140 decibels. For reference, that is louder than a jet engine at close range, and comparable to a firearm discharge near the ear. At these levels, sound is no longer just noise, it becomes a physical force. It can fatigue materials, damage structures, and injure human hearing almost instantly. Starship operates in this regime for several seconds during ignition and ascent. The ground plays a massive role in this. Early Starship launches occurred without a traditional flame trench. Exhaust slammed directly into a flat concrete surface, causing shockwaves to reflect upward. Those reflections fed back into the exhaust plume, creating standing pressure waves that dramatically increased acoustic intensity. This reflected sound energy contributed to the severe damage seen on the launch pad during early flights. Sound reflection turns the area under the rocket into an acoustic pressure cooker. Instead of dissipating downward, energy bounces back into the vehicle and surrounding structures. This is one reason SpaceX implemented an enormous water deluge system. Water absorbs acoustic energy far more effectively than air or concrete. By flooding the pad with thousands of gallons per second, engineers can break up pressure waves and reduce reflected sound, not silence the rocket, but keep it from tearing the ground apart. Even with water suppression, Starship remains the loudest rocket ever launched. Measurements show that at distances exceeding 12 miles, sound levels still rival heavy construction equipment. 
At 20 miles, low-frequency components remain clearly detectable. This persistence is directly tied to the size of the rocket and the wavelength of the sound it produces. Bigger rockets support longer wavelengths, and longer wavelengths travel farther. Comparisons help make this clear. Saturn V was enormous and powerful, yet it used five F-1 engines spaced farther apart. The space shuttle relied on solid rocket boosters with different acoustic behavior. NASA's space launch system produces immense thrust, but Starship's clustered liquid engines generate stronger acoustic coupling. The result is that Starship often measures louder at liftoff than rockets with similar or even greater total thrust. Here's where the story gets even more interesting. The acoustic signature doesn't end at launch. During booster return and landing, fewer engines fire, yet the sound can rival liftoff levels. That's because deceleration, atmospheric compression, and engine relights create shock waves that stack and propagate outward. Sonic booms and engine acoustics overlap, producing sound fields that are just as intense, though shorter in duration. This matters because sound isn't just a spectacle, it's a design constraint. Acoustic loads affect avionics, fuel tanks, and structural components. Engineers must design vehicles to survive not only heat and vibration, but pressure waves powerful enough to flex metal. Starship's stainless steel structure helps here, offering better resistance to acoustic fatigue compared to traditional aluminum alloys, but the challenge remains enormous. The deeper takeaway is this. Starship sounds the way it does because it represents a new class of machine. There is no quiet way to move 16 million pounds of force through air. The roar is the audible proof of thrust, pressure, and scale colliding with Earth's atmosphere. It is physics announcing itself in the loudest way possible. And here's the cliffhanger to leave you with. As Starship moves toward rapid reusability and higher launch cadence, engineers must solve the problem of managing this acoustic energy repeatedly, safely, and near populated areas. The future of orbital launch sites may depend not on thrust or fuel, but on sound itself. How quiet can the loudest rocket ever built realistically become? If this breakdown helped you understand what you're really hearing during a Starship launch, hit the like button so more people see this explanation instead of guesses and myths. Subscribe for more deep dives into real spaceflight engineering, and share this video on Facebook because once you understand the sound, you'll never hear a rocket launch the same way again.